Hey y'all, my name is Julian Collins, otherwise known as Julian Creates, and welcome to the Soul Along for ME 2009, my first pattern with Nomi Pattern. In this Soul Along, we'll be going through view A, which is the knit button up shirt, um, and I will go through each step for you to help you put it together as easily as possible. But before we get started, I want to give a little inspiration of how I came up with the design for this pattern. I took a lot of inspiration from mid-century men's fashion, especially a lot of your knit sportswear, um, where men were wearing a lot of great knit shirts um, that were buttoned up, that had a kind of a bottom band that were just easy and effortless that you can wear almost every day. Also, I was headed back into the office for the first time in like two years. So I wanted to make sure that I had something comfortable to wear that I knew could be stylish. And was seeing a lot of your fun athleisure um, garments being made in the high street. So with these smart joggers, as well as knit button up, you can make this dressed up, dressed down, but either way, it could be a pair of secret pajamas. So let's get started. Now let's review our pattern pieces and what we need to cut. You will need piece one, which is the front. You will be cutting two out of the body fabric. You will need piece two, which is the back. You will cut one on the fold out of the body fabric. You will cut piece three, which is the collar. You will cut two of these on the fold out of the contrast fabric, as well as one out of the interfacing. Depending on the interfacing that you're using and your fabric, if you want to add more body, you might want to interface both pieces. You will need number four, which is the placket. You will cut two out of your contrasting fabric as well as two out of the interfacing. You need number five, which are the sleeves, which you will need to cut two out of the body fabric. You will need six, which is the sleeve band, which we will cut two out of the contrast fabric as well as interfacing. You'll need number seven, which is the right front band. You'll cut one out of the contrasting fabric and one out of interfacing. You'll need number eight, which is the left front band which will cut one out of the contrasting fabric and one out of interfacing. And finally, you'll need number nine, which is the back band, which will cut on the fold, and you'll need one of, out of contrasting fabric and one out of interfacing. So one thing I would like to note is that numbers six, seven, eight, nine do require interfacing. Adding interfacing to these pieces is going to limit some of the stretch and it will give you more of a tailored boxy look like you will see on a normal woven garment. If you want to be able to utilize that stretch more um, and maybe have it where it kind of hugs your body a little bit more, adding a more of a, a like a blouson effect. What you can also do is eliminate adding interfacing for your sleeve band, your back band, and then only interface the first around four inches of your right front band and your left front band. So now that we've gotten that out the way, let's go ahead and cut out our pieces. Make sure that we're marking our notches and our dots interface our pieces and we can get started sewing. So now that we have all of our pieces cut, our notches marked, as well as our dots, let's go ahead and get started. So the first step that we're going to do is we are going to reinforce the neck edge at the large dot. 
as we can see here on the pattern. So I'm going to take this over to my regular sewing machine and sew a straight stitch along that large dot towards the end. And then I'm going to clip to the dot, making sure not to go through the stitching. You can use a regular straight stitch for this, but make sure you're using the correct needle for your fabric. I'll be using a stretch needle. Now that we have reinforced our dots and cut our notches, we are going to attach the front to the back at the shoulder seams, march, marking your uh, notches and making sure that they match. Here you can use a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch on your sewing machine, or you can use your serger, making sure that you use a 5 eighths inch seam allowance. I'm going to use my serger and sew both of these up and then press them towards the back of the garment. Once you have done your shoulder seams, we're going to put the body of the shirt aside for a second and work on the collar. So the first thing that you need to do is take your interfaced collar piece, which is number three. And you're going to fold over the notched edge by five eighths of an inch and press it. Once you have done that, you are going to then trim this seam up to a quarter of an inch. When it comes down to it, what we will be doing is we will be folding this over and then going ahead and sewing this down to help finish the collar. So this is the top piece of your collar um, and then your other piece is your under piece. And sometimes I like to keep a little bit more than a fourth um, just because I know I have, I be, be missing <laughs> where I need to sew a little bit. So if that is the case, you can cheat that five eighths of an inch, just a hair, just to make sure that you have enough to sew over if you're using your sewing machine and trying to stitch in the ditch. Just a little tip I learned along the way as <laughs> I have missed my seam placement a time or two. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this and trim this away and come right back. So once we have trimmed our seam pieces, we are now going to sew together our collar at a 5 8 inch seam allowance all along the unnotched edge and up to the sides up to the large dots, which is around five eighths of an inch down from the original collar size piece. This can be done um, using like a stretch stitch or even a straight stitch. This is not going to stretch a lot. So this collar piece is not going to have a lot of stretch and is not going to be stretched as you're wearing the garment. Um, but on the safer side, you can also use a zigzag stitch as well. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew this up and come back.
Now that we have sewn our collar pieces together, what we're gonna do is go ahead and clip our corners and trim down our seam allowance a bit, even before we go ahead and turn this pattern out. So as you can see here, I want to try to get as close as possible so without going through the stitching, leaving just a little bit of the fabric still there just to make sure that I can have a nice crisp turn as well as trimming up the seam allowance as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then come right back. So now that I've gone ahead and trimmed my corners and my seams, I'm going to go ahead and turn this out and give it a press. To help with that, I like using one of these point turners here. It just makes it so much easier to, to turn out your fabric. So this is one of the Dritz uh, seam gauge as well as point turners that can just give you a little extra help and still keep your points flat at the edges. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this out and give it a press. Taking my point turner here, just to give a little extra, a little extra help. There we go, see? You get a nice flat point that we'll then go and press. Once we do press that, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and understitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my collar open this way, making sure that all the seam allowance goes towards the untrimmed edge. So we're going to understitch as close as far as possible towards the corner and towards the edges just to make sure that my collar does not roll and it does not have any top stitching. If you do like top stitching or prefer top stitching, even contrasting top stitching, that is also an option as well. I would use a, a larger seam, a larger seam um, stitch length, such as a 3.0 or even upwards of a 3.5, just to make sure that you're getting a nice quality stitch that you can actually see. So we're going to press this, then understitch, and then we'll start working on attaching this to the body of the garment. So now that we have finished uh, the understitching of our collar piece, and try to go as far as you can. So I went to about here on either side. You can also go up the side as well. This just make sure that your sides are not going to roll over. It's now time to attach our collar to the body of our garment. So what we're gonna do is make sure that we are attaching the long edge to the neck edge of our garment. And there are small, small dots on your collar pieces that match up with the sides, with the shoulder seams. So usually that's where I start. So I like to mark my shoulder seams first. And then as you come all the way around, this notch will match up with this notch on the shoulder or on the neck edge. And your edge of your collar should end right at where you made that clip for that dot. That's gonna be the most important part of the garment because everything is gonna start matching up to these dots on either side of the neck edge. That's also where you're going to see the attachment of your placket to make sure that everything comes together seamlessly. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pin this together. 
and take it back over to the sewing machine and you can use a zigzag or a straight stitch for this um, this is not going to get a lot of stretch um, but use a stitch that you feel most comfortable with I would definitely use a sewing machine for this just because this is a little bit more precise um, instead of a serger so I have sewn on the long edge of my collar to the body of my garment now I'm going to take it and press it and making sure that my I'm pressing my seam allowances up and you can trim some of that seam allowance back. Then what I'm going to do is take the folded edge and kind of cover up that stitching line by at least an eighth of an inch so that I can then pin it and stitch in the ditch along the outside, connecting the collar facing and the collar, um, just kind of making sure that we get a clean edge there. So I'm going to press this up and then go back over to the sewing machine and do an an edge stitch to make sure that I'm catching this folded edge like that. So I'll do that and be right back. So now that we have our collar attached as well as this folded edge also catch so you have all the seam allowance all combined. You can kind of start seeing the shirt coming together and taking place. So now the next step tells us to sew together the side seams right here at the underarm matching our notches now that is if you are looking to do a um, putting the sleeve in the round I am a creature of habit and I like to sew my my sleeves in flat so in order to do that I will be keeping my side seams open and using my serger to serge in my sleeve heads and then sewing together my sleeve and the body of my top all in one step. I find that I'm able to keep my um, seam allowances to match easier this way, but do what's best for you. If you like to go ahead and, and sew in your sleeves in the round, go ahead and sew down this edge. Since I am waiting on that, what I'm going to start doing is working on the placket pieces. So now that we have our placket pieces, the first step that we are going to do is we're going to press under 5 eighths of an inch on the non-notched edge. So it's going to be on this edge. Press down 5 eighths of an inch and then trim that down. All right. So I've gone ahead and folded over my 5 eighths of an inch on my non-notched edge and trimmed it down. I've also made sure to mark my notches. And just for my own personal sake, I went ahead and did a small clip um, at the fold line for each piece. At the top, as well as at the bottom. This just helps to make sure that I am... I know exactly where to fold, so I just use like little notches as an extra guide mark as I'm sewing along. So what we're now going to do is taking our body piece we are going to Sew on our placket edge, matching notches, as well as a large dot. Making sure not to, we're going to make sure that we do not sew in this collar piece. We're going to keep that free. But we're going to sew from the top all the way down. Once we have done that, we are going to press the collar towards the placket itself. So we're going to press that seam towards the outside. So let me do that and I'll come right back. So now that we have our placket sewn on, making sure that we match those uh, dots right here, what we're gonna do is we're going to fold it back using that little notch that I made earlier so that we can go ahead and close up the top of our uh, placket. So we're gonna sew that all the way to the notch as well using a straight stitch, all right. So once I went ahead and sewed up the top of my placket all the way to the dot, you can go ahead, trim that seam, and turn it over. 
just like that. So what we are now going to do is we're going to make sure that we fold this placket all the way down towards the hem. And we are going to make sure that we're catching that folded edge. And we're going to do another stitch in the ditch or edge stitch to make sure that we're catching that placket. And then we're going to sew on the placket on the other side. Now, one tip I will say is that sometimes, you know, we do not get as close to that dot as we want to. And there might be a little bit more space between your collar and your placket. Don't, don't be afraid, um, especially depending on your fabric. It can be a little difficult to make sure that you're getting that. But if it does not come as close as you want, a few hand stitches right in this area kind of helps draw it together. It is not something that you're really going to see if it's like maybe an eighth of an inch or less out. So that's always a little tip that you can use sometimes. <laughs> a little hand stitching can hide a multitude of sins. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to press this pl placket folded, edge stitch it um, to make sure that I'm catching the folded edge on the back. So probably stitching in the ditch. And then we're going to sew on the other placket and then we'll start working on the sleeves. So now that we have both of our plackets attached as well as under stitch so all of the seams are in place. Really, we're in the home stretch. Making sure that all of those dots match up right here in this area is kind of the most fiddly bit of this pattern. Once you get to that, you're smooth sailing. So now, let's install our sleeves. And again, I'm going to install them flat. So we're gonna take one side, we're gonna stretch it out. Now, what I have done here is that I have marked, so I have my regular notches, but then I also made a small little clip at all of my dots, just to make sure that I can match everything up appropriately. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to matching up my notches and dots, put in my sleeve, and I'm going to take it to the serger and serge it, but you don't have to do that. You can also sew it on your sewing machine. You can use a zigzag or a straight stitch with one stitch at the regular 5 a seam allowance. And then another one around a quarter of an inch into the seam allowance itself, just for strength. If you're using like a four thread overlock, it should be easy that you can just do that in one stitch. So I'm going to pin on my sleeve, take this over to the serger and serge it up. So now that I have sewn both of my sleeves on, I sewed them on a flat again. And using my serger and press the seam allowance towards the sleeve itself, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sides matching my notches. And the main reason I like to, to do my sleeves flat is it gives me more control over especially my seams here. So I'm going to make sure that my seams are butt together. And usually I put a pin right through there. We're going to pin the notch at the sleeve together. And then also the bottom of the sleeve. I then like to sew this from the bottom, from the bottom down. I would use a, you can use a zigzag, you can use a serger. Um, this is gonna have a little stretch in it because you are moving it around your body. So you do wanna make sure that you're using a stretch that has a little bit of movement in it. Um, a stretch stitch also will work as well. But I'm gonna take these to my serger, sew down both sides, and then come back and we'll install our cuffs for the sleeves. All right, so now let's work on our cuff. As you can see here, I have one that is interface, and this is P6. And just to remind you, by interfacing this, even with a like a stretch trico interfacing, is going to eliminate some of that stretch here. Um, so another option 
is to eliminate the interfacing altogether. If you want to make sure that it has um, the full access to all of the stretch ability of the fabric. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take your piece and fold it right sides together, matching your notches here. And you're going to sew down at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, I would use a zigzag stitch or a stretch stitch just because there is some stretch there as you're going, um, as you're putting it around your wrist. But we're going to sew that up for both cuffs and then we'll be right back. So once you have gone ahead and sewn up your seam, go ahead and iron that flat so that you can make sure that you get as smooth and even as a cuff as possible. What we are now going to do is match wrong sides together, making sure that those seams matches match up as well as the notch. And we're going to give it another press before we go ahead and attach it to our sleeve. So once we have given our cuff a press, we are going to take the cuff and put it into our sleeve with the fold side towards the sleeve itself matching up our seams like that as well as our notches so there should be a notch right here at the front to the notch on the cuff as well once you secure that with either a clip or a pin what you can do is now take this to the sewing machine or to your serger and serge this up if you're using your sewing machine, you can do, um, using a 5A seam allowance, do one line of stitching, and then around one fourth into the seam allowance itself, do another line of stitching just to secure it. So we're gonna take this over to our serger and serge these on to both sleeves. So once my cuffs are installed, I go ahead and I press my seam allowance, um, the serge edge up towards the sleeve, and now we can start working on the bottom band. To sew together the bottom band, you will need pieces seven, eight, and nine. Um, remember, these are stated to be interface, but it's gonna take away a little bit of that stretch. So if, if you want to have more stretch, making sure that you interface at least like around the first four inches of the left and right bands to make sure that those points are interface for the buttons and buttonholes if you want to have more stretch around the back band and the rest of the band. Or you can um, have a more structured look and interface the whole band. What we're going to do here is we're going to sew along the side edges, making sure that you match your notches on either side at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once you have sewn those, what you are then going to do is press up five eighths of an inch on the non notched edge of all the pieces and then trim that down to one fourth of an inch. All right, so now that we have sewn together all of our band pieces and even went ahead and folded up um, that non notched edge, what we're gonna do now is match up the notch side to the bottom edge of the shirt matching all the notches and starting your end band at the dot, the large dot on both sides of your left and right bands. We're then gonna take that over to sew and then we will fold this over and start working on that. But let's first start by sewing this all together. So once you have sewn on the band to your shirt body, what you are then going to do is you're going to match right sides together of your band like so, and you're going to sew along this edge on your left side and on the straight edge on your right. You can use a straight stitch here because you really want to make sure that you're getting to this point and it's not going to get a lot of stretch here, but you're making sure that it matches up at the end of this dot. You're going to do that on both sides and then you're going to turn the band um, outwards so that we can work on um, edge stitching the back of this to the back of the garment. So once you go ahead and sew that triangular at the left end, as well as a square edge on the right band end, you're gonna turn it out similarly to how you turned out your collar and start to fold up your back seam, 
making sure that you are um, covering where you sold previously. We're gonna edge stitch this down after we give everything a good press, making sure that our seam allowance from sewing the band to the shirt is pointed into towards the band itself. So I'm gonna take this and press it, pin this up, and then we will edge stitch this down and get ready for finishing. Now that your bottom band is attached and understitched, I used a triple stretch stitch or a stretch triple stitch um, just to make sure that there was still that bit of give in the bottom band. It's now time to make sure you have pressed your garment and then do your finishings. So you will be using piece number four as well as your pieces number seven and eight to make sure that you get your button placement and sew on your buttons and buttonholes. As we can see here, this shows our button placement along our garment. So you can put this along the fold line here, mark out where your buttonholes should go, and then go ahead and using your machine, make your buttonholes, and then sew on your buttons to the right side. The pattern calls for five eighth inch buttons. And for the placket, you have five buttons. And then along the button band, you have two button holes and two buttons. And with that, you're done with you A of ME 2009. And there you have it. You have completed view A of ME 2009 and should have a nice shirt that you can wear dressed up or dressed down and just add to your everyday wardrobe. Thank you so much for joining me and be sure to check back for the next video, which will be view B, how to create the smart joggers as well. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on social media at Julian Creates on all social media platforms and feel free to tag me because I would love to see what you made. Till next time, keep creating.